Great. Uh, so with that, let's just get started. Uh, something about myself. My name is Arun. Uh, I'm the founder of Crack Verbal and I also uh, have been a GMAT uh, coach and a MBA mentor for uh, many years now. Uh, feel free to uh, you know, connect with me on LinkedIn. Uh, so I'm a kind of an open connection on LinkedIn, so which means um, if you get uh, connected to me, what it also means is that you have access uh, to my network because now they become your slugan level network. And if you're on a free account on LinkedIn, you'll realize that uh, the best way to reach out to people is uh, connecting with people who have a lot of connections, right? So connect with me on LinkedIn. And in case you need to reach out to me over email, that's my email address, arunji at crackfobal.com. Uh, so I think uh, you have a background of me, but I'll just uh, keep it simple. Uh, what I really like uh, about the whole MBA admission process, and I spent uh, you know, considerable time understanding this, uh, talking to uh, people from the admissions committee, uh, looking at successful students, you know, what is it that successful students have, which you know, probably others are uh, not able to have, correct? And what I have done is I have created my own set of rules. Uh, I have created my own, uh, you know, assumption looking at, you know, uh, the kind of uh, uh, schools, the kind of profiles that have been selected. So these are my opinions, right? So uh, I think, um, you know, the, the one thing that I tell people is don't come to me for data. If you were to come and ask me what is the average GMAT score for so-and-so school, I would probably be a terrible person because, you know, I just go, go and Google, but I can give you my opinion on, you know, what are your chances. So that's, that's really the crystal ball gazing uh, that I'm trying to do over here. Um, some of our students, right, in the past, I'm just giving you some examples of uh, students who have gotten in. Uh, in case you are interested to know about any one profile, Okay, uh, just uh, put it in the chat window and uh, I can possibly uh, talk a little bit more about that candidate. Um, so in case you have any questions, any, any, any profiles. All right, so most of these, uh, you know, people have been uh, high scorers. Uh, from ISB, I think uh, we do have we do have someone from ISB. So Vikas Kaushal is from ISB. So yeah, so we usually send a lot of uh, students to ISB as well. So that's that's one school. By the way, um, you know, uh, all of these, uh, their success stories is uh, available on the website. Uh, these are some of our mentors. Uh, again, you know, just to give you an example, Sharon is right now uh, working for Apple. She actually uh, is in the team that uh, forecasts uh, the sale of Apple products, including the iPhone, right? So you can imagine how cool, but how stressful that job would be. How many I iPhone 11 Pro Max, right, are going to be sold this quarter. But uh, she went to uh, Fikwa, which also, by the way, is where the CEO of uh, Apple is from, uh, Tim Cook. So he's an MBA from Fikwa as well. All right. So without much ado, I'll uh, just uh, get to the penultimate section and then we'll get to what we have in store. So a couple of free resources in case you have not already done so, uh, please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. I put out, I try to put out, we try to put out a lot of videos per week. So, uh, and this is all free content, right? So uh, would be helpful. Uh, we also have some free resources in a couple of places. What I'll do is I'll just give you the link for those free resources. Uh, maybe after this, you can go ahead and have a look at, uh, you know, if you find them interesting. So one of them obviously is the uh, blog. So we are, uh, you know, uh, coming out with a lot of blogs on topics. So you can just go see that as well. Uh, and also for today, for those attending this webinar, um, there is a course that we have, uh, which is essentially for applications. Um, so in case um, you are interested, so it includes a ton of videos and uh, about me talking about the whole application process. And uh, we are offering it at uh, $1 today. Just uh, apply the coupon code CRACKMBA2019, right? Okay, so let's start with what we have. So I have a question for you and I want you to, uh, I hope all of you are sitting maybe with a paper and a pen in hand. Uh, and I just want you to 
be reflective right so whatever i am going to tell you today i will tell you i will not try to tell you uh, things i just want you to think correct rather than me uh, reading out from slides correct i want you to think i want you to reflect so the first question that i want you to reflect on is you know who are you right like what is it that you are going to present about yourself okay to the artcom now for that for a moment let me put you in the shoes of the artcom okay so let's say you are that you are a member of the admission committee correct what do you think and you can go ahead and type it in the chat window what do you think you would want okay now there is a role reversal what would you want in a candidate put yourself in the shoes of the artcom and ask yourself what is it that you want to see in the candidate and whatever all right so someone said a complete package okay uh, pratik says leadership all right okay go ahead again whatever comes to your mind whatever you think versatility okay interesting leader motivator thinker to analyze whether the candidate is best suited for the course and can bring something new personal and professional achievements strong reasoning logical skills first of all the intent and seriousness passionate and hungry you know what i like that word so what you are telling me in short is uh, this right whatever you are telling me correct passionate hungry i mean it just sounds so steve jobs right yeah think about it would you think do you think steve jobs would actually get into um, harvard or stanford if he had applied think about it do you think steve jobs would have gotten into uh, harvard or stanford abhishek feels yes ashish obviously right i mean just imagine who would who would have rejected in his right mind rejected uh, steve jobs right but let's let's start for a moment right uh, first of all steve jobs did not complete college okay so technically he might not have uh, been able to uh, get into an mba program but let's assume hypothetically right uh, he would have completed college correct do you think steve jobs was the kind of guy who would focus just to score marks do you think he would have had great grades no he would have had terrible grades right he would have sucked he would have done like a bunch of things all over the place scattered brain right um, not able to kind of you know pay attention to studies and just imagine right gmat i'm pretty sure steve jobs would look at sentence correction questions and say you know what i am going to define the new standard of grammar right so that's what most apple products do right so he would have probably done terribly on the gmat as well correct because um, you know it it's not really a test of uh, your managerial abilities it's more a test of uh, how well you are able to perform in standardized tests in case in case you don't know let me tell you i have been a gmat instructor for over a decade for oh, actually it's about 18 years now correct i've been doing it since 2001 gmat is not an accurate measure of your career success correct so the point is the adcom is not going to be selecting steve jobs you have to understand this they are not here to place a bet on you correct what they want is they want signs that this guy will succeed because eventually if you think about it successful people are successful because you know it's in fact mbas don't make people successful correct but successful people make mba programs look great which means what they are really looking at is they are not trying to take a uncut jewel and trying to polish it into a diamond or anything right they are looking at you know like a like a gem that has good potential they know for a fact that when they cut it it will be a couple of carats right 
So what they are really looking at in you is, will this guy succeed? Think about it, right? And I've had, uh, you know, friends who have gone to IITs, I've had students who have gone to uh, ISB. And I can tell you this much, that it is not so much the act of studying for four years or studying for one year, but a lot of times the value is placed on the pedigree of the college. The reason you're going to get a job after Harvard is not only what you have studied during the two years at Harvard, but also the fact that Harvard has already taken care of your pedigree. They know, the employers know. What are the chances of me, uh, you know, kind of going wrong with this hire because Harvard already spent a lot of time? So in some sense, the B-schools are saying, who is this guy that is employable? Correct. Who is the guy who will eventually kind of succeed and will, you know, do very well for himself. And in case uh, you don't know this, okay, they are expecting alumni to, you know, come back and uh, return, um, you know, whatever they have, right? Like a part of it to the college, right? So donations are a very um, normal thing in top B school. So that's another thing that B school is looking, saying that, look, if this guy succeeds, right, if not donation, he will at least hire from my college, correct? So all B schools have this vested interest of looking at people who already have the traits, correct? Now, the idea is you need to tell what are the traits that a B school is going to pick. I got good news for you. I think, and this is again where my judgment comes into play, there are probably six factors, five, five to six factors that can really change. And these are the six factors that I would like you to worry about when you're writing your whole MB application. Okay. And one last thing, which is don't expect them to be perfect. Okay. So a lot of times what happens is we suffer from this uh, uh, particular syndrome uh, and you can actually Google for it. It's called imposter syndrome, where we always feel that others are better than us, correct? Like when you are applying to a B school, you say, man, I got like a 730, but you know, guess what? I know uh, someone with 760s also applied. So in your mind, you're thinking you're, you know, less, uh, you have less, you know, chances of getting in. But really not true, okay? Not true. It's, it's about how you tell your story. See, what happens is all this GMAT and, you know, everything else. See, these are all elimination criteria. They are not selection criteria. Now, I'll tell you the difference. Elimination criteria is a criteria by which I can tell that if you don't meet this minimum requirement, correct, I'm not even going to be looking into your application. Think of it as a security guard sitting outside the office, correct? You have passed them instructions that, hey, let only people who have above 700 come inside, correct? So many a times what happens is a poor GMAT score may actually work against you. But if you think that you have a 730, you have been, uh, let's say, working in uh, the technology sector and you've got extra curriculums, remember everyone else also has similar profiles. What matters is how you tell your story. Right. And I want you to look at it this way. Uh, one thing that I've seen is you need to start having this hero mindset. OK, so for now, I want you to think that you are, I don't know, Salman Khan right, or, um, you know, your Alia Bhatt or whoever else you want to be. You need to say, I'm the hero, right? I'm, I'm kind of like I have to project myself. So think about it this way. Your life is the movie. OK. And what they are asking for is a trailer. They are saying, please tell me, okay, in let's say, you know, two to three minutes, what you're all about, okay? See, if a movie like Bahubali can have a trailer, correct? So just imagine they condense that entire movie into like a two, three minute clip. But what they did is they just told you one or two things, that's it. Rest of it you will see when you see the movie. Similarly, when we go in front of the admission committee and we want to be the hero, we have to have what I call as a hero mindset, which means pick one superpower, maybe two. Okay. The mistake that I see people doing is they will say, I'm hardworking, I'm diligent, I'm this and that. They tell too many things to the outcome. They're like, you know what, what if I don't tell them that I'm, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm uh, very uh, sincere in my work? 
What if I don't tell them? Because I'm very sincere in my work. But you know what? You're not telling them that you brush your teeth every day as well, right? So you don't need to tell everything. Is, is being sincere your superpower? If it is, then please talk about sincerity. Don't talk about anything else. Correct? So what you need to do, you need to approach your stories with that one thing that, you know, this guy who's reading my application, correct? Just think about it. The guy is, you know, probably they have about 30 minutes. Okay. I'm, I'm just telling you the reality. Okay. You have 30 minutes. In that 30 minutes, correct? He's going to look at your transcripts. He's going to look at your, uh, you know, TOEFL or uh, IELTS scores in case you send those. He's going to look at your uh, work history, correct? Your application form is pretty lengthy. He's also going to be looking at things like your recommenders, right? What they have uh, said about you. He's going to look at your test scores. And hey, by the way, you also have your essays. Now, when he's reading that uh, essay, and you can actually Google for this, I'm just going to put it in the chat window. It's called Cognitive Overload. He already has enough on his head. Don't complicate the plot. Don't tell too many things. He's like, you know what? I have to tell him everything that I have done in my life. This is the one opportunity I have, right? Wrong idea. Here is what I would like to, you know, see this whole thing as. Assume that the AdCom is a venture capitalist, correct? They are the sequoias of the world, right? You are a startup. So for them, you are an investment. I don't know how you're going to turn out, man. Right? I mean, I think you will do well. I hope you will be successful. Correct? Now, you are in that position where you have to convince them that, look, I am your safest bet. Correct? So for that, you need to understand what do B schools actually look at. Right? So if you understand, you need to pitch yourself. You need to sell yourself. You are a salesman at the end of the day. Correct? And the last thing is, very honestly, at this point, this is the only thing you have in your entire application that can change. I'm assuming, by the way, uh, anybody, can you just go ahead and, uh, you know, type in the chat window if you have taken the GMAT? How many of you have applied in R1? Let me see that. Anyone applied in R1? And uh, how many of you are planning to apply in R2? Right. Okay. So we see a lot of R2 applying uh, candidates looking at R2. Great. Okay. So by the way, uh, just before I get there, uh, there is this feature called raise your hand. Okay. I have no idea what to do when you raise your hand. So uh, please uh, don't click on that one. I don't know what it does. All right. So great. I, I, I see a bunch of you who have applied in round one. Uh, not many of you applied in round one, bunch of you looking at round two. But really, I mean, this is October end, man. I mean, you can't retake the GMAT, sure, correct? In fact, I would recommend if there is one thing that you can change, please change your GMAT scores, right? That is the other part, correct? If you can potentially change. But that's really the hero mindset, right? So just say, you know what, I'm going to kill it. Because if you don't have the confidence, if you don't execute the, uh, exude the confidence, correct? Um, then, you know, it, it's going to hard is going to be hard for uh, that confidence to come through in your application. Okay, so what are the six points that I think the B schools would be looking for in potential candidates? See, these are six points. Let's start with the first one. Okay, now what I'm telling you is what the B school is looking for. Okay, now we need to strategize how to best um, make them feel at ease. Correct. So this is what the B school is thinking. The B school says, well, you know, we have a pretty rigorous course. Correct. Uh, in fact, here is a great read uh, to anyone who likes to read books. Uh, this is a great book. It's called uh, Snapshots from Hell. Okay. There's a book called Snapshots from Hell written by a, by a then first year student at Stanford. Correct. Very, very well written book. Uh, and I, you know, strongly recommend that you give it a read. Um, and this book basically talks about, uh, you know, the whole quantitative uh, focus that many of these top schools have. So if you think you know Excel, uh, trust me, you go to B school, you'll realize it's at a completely different level, right? Uh, so even things like they expect you to understand, uh, you know, like 
sometimes even calculus and uh, you know use some basic modeling especially for certain courses so they are saying look if this guy is not able to hack reading comprehension on the gmat chances are he is not going to be able to go through the case study that i'm going to give uh, you know for him to read uh, before he comes and participates in the you know case study discussion in the class the next day correct that's what they are looking at right they don't want you zoning out they don't want this guy saying you know after one year he crashes out of school and he says you know what i couldn't hack it they want confidence that this guy will do very well during the two years of academic course load how do you convince them on that right i this is a question to which you need to answer right i can't give you an answer for it but that's what you need to think so go back to your undergrad look at you know what are the are there any uh, you know uh, things that you have really done well at uh, look at your maybe you know retaking the gmat as i said because really if you get like a killer gmat score get like a i don't know 767 70 kind of killer gmat score you know it's going to be very hard for them to uh, you know really argue that your undergrad was poor or something right so usually a great gmat score can wipe out poor undergrad but uh, that's really what you have so in case you have like a poor undergrad and you have like a a poor gmat score then you know that pretty much makes you a candidate to be rejected unless and until i don't know your surname is ambani right i'm pretty sure if your name is isha ambani then you know you can get through harvard with a 600 on the gmat as well by the way in case you didn't know she actually went to stanford gsb right uh, but again no offense meant to anyone i'm just saying that uh, to a large extent this is going to be a huge factor the second factor they are looking at is you know work experience correct now even this one right is kind of relative so people fixate on quantity i don't know why people fixate on quantity correct so i have two years experience you know yes five years experience mera suna wo two years ke three years ka cut off hai four years ka see first of all you have to understand that when any when any b school publishes a number called average you have to understand what is the meaning of the word average correct see average is a very misleading statistics okay if for example i were to ask you uh, so you know only very young children and very old people wear diapers correct now if i were to ask you uh, what is the average age of people who wear diapers correct you could you know the answer could be 42 just think about it the average age of people in india who wear diapers is 42 maybe no 42 year old is wearing a diaper but there are enough 70 80 year olds and you know enough uh, let's say uh, kids below 2 who still wear a diaper so average works out that way so please don't see this 5 years average 4 years average it's a general sense of how the class would be composed but what i have seen colleges are willing to take bets on people who have lower years of experience right they are saying i am okay even if this guy has not done much but he is showing potential correct he is showing potential i gave you uh, you know a set of students if you remember uh, there was this uh, name called raviraj jain correct who went to harvard so if you think about it raviraj had two years experience when he went in correct but brilliant right iit bombay started you know something on his own uh, you know on the side got some kind of initial fund all of this while working full time in at kirney as a consultant right a uh, brilliant man i mean he took the cat he cracked it and he just got the cat scorecard you know just to say that look if i want i can get into any of the iams but you know i'm really gunning for a top year school so uh, people are looking at uh, younger and younger candidates on the other hand right um, people who have substantial experience you know if you have a valid story if you have a genuine reason for why you think an mba now makes perfect sense for you please go ahead and tell them that story correct see i'll tell you what happens with people with a lot of years experience especially uh, people with let's say 10 15 years experience many a times what happens in the corporate world is that there is like this pyramid right you understand corporate is a pyramid structure and uh, people cannot you know when they start their career it's easy for you to pluck the low hanging fruits right and then they get to middle management and that middle management what they realize is that it's harder for them to crack the the next level right and uh, you know 
And a lot of times I think, you know, people say, oh, I'm not able to crack through the next level. You know, I'll go and do an MBA and somehow MBA will magically kind of uh, take me from uh, my level and push me to a couple of levels above me, right? Uh, that's unrealistic because you have to invest in yourself. You have to grow as a person. Maybe you do an MBA and you grow in the MBA program, correct? That's perfectly okay. But uh, you need to be very clear in telling uh, the B school why you are applying, correct? I've had students who have uh, gotten in with uh, a lot of years experience. In fact, uh, if you remember one more picture that I showed you was Neeraj Kakkar. Neeraj Kakkar uh, went on to do his MBA from Wharton and uh, he is the founder of the company Paperboat, correct? Now, the thing with Neeraj is he already had an MBA, correct? From uh, MDI Gurgaon, correct? And he was, he had about 10 plus years experience working in Coke, right? And he had already reached a general manager level. Huh? Like I remember when he had come for the classes 2006, he had come in a Honda CRV, right? That at that time was a 20 lakh car. And I used to think, man, this guy is doing very well for himself. Correct? Why is he wanting to do an MBA? That too with, you know, substantial experience and stuff. But just think about it, right? He, he kind of catapulted himself to like maybe another level that wouldn't have had uh, happened if he had not gone to Wharton, right? That's where he went to do his MBA. Now, why am I telling you all this? The reason I'm telling you all this is because, you know, you have to show them uh, your quality. You have to tell them what you bring to the table, correct? You need to talk about uh, the, 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 you know, richness of your experience, right? Rather than, I would be super impressed by a guy who says, you know, I have like two years of experience, you know, coding, but, you know, guess what? I'm one of the leading, uh, you know, coders in my company for AI or ML right? Uh, and I really understand technology because, you know, these are the kind of guys that uh, companies need with the management degree to figure out the business aspect of technology, correct? So they want people with technology background. Otherwise, you can't come from a humanities background and, you know, crack this kind of stuff. So work experience, quality, 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 okay? Don't, don't stress too much on quantity. Try to convince on them. The third thing, right? So uh, already someone mentioned that, you know, they are looking at leadership. So how do you define leadership? The way I define leadership is, uh, have you done something over and above what was expected of you? This can be at work. This can be in your personal life. Tell me something. So I'll tell you a couple of things that people have written, successful candidates had written, right? Uh, in order to do this uh, thing, so leadership. So I'll give you a couple of examples, right? And the reason I'm giving you these examples is because you need to start understanding that leadership can come in different flavors. So one of the students had written that, you know, um, in my kind of uh, whatever uh, area in my community, I had actually uh, was part of this uh, or part of an organizing committee of a Ganesh Pandal, correct? So he said this Ganesh Pandal basically, you know, he said, I, I learned everything about management in that one week. Okay. He said everything that could go wrong went wrong. Correct. And I don't know why I was selected the president, but I realized that, you know, there were a lot of factions and, you know, there were a lot of pressure on me. And, you know, so he said, I learned about leadership, but see, the idea is he put up his hand and he said, you know what, I will take ownership. Now, whether he failed, how well he did it is secondary. Right. This is not a guy who comes back home you know, grabs a beer uh, from his fridge and, you know, watches Netflix, right? This is a guy who's doing something else, something more, correct? I'll give you another example. Um, so another student had written about uh, the fact that he was helping. He always wanted to get into a startup, right? And he said, you know, I'm the only, uh, you know, uh, son, my, you know, parents, they need me and I can't just quit my job. So he started moonlighting, right? So he started working with his friend who had a startup and he said, you know, I was so proud that I used to have this, uh, you know, second visiting card and I would work on weekends, and, you know, did like a lot of cool shit in that company. But that's the whole point, right? You did something that was not expected of you, something that, you know, this, why do B-schools look for, right? Because think about it, right? they have realized that the biggest chance of a guy surviving and succeeding in real life is when he exhibits something extra. Any leader that you think at work, in your personal life, think about it. He will always have that some extra, some X factor, correct? 
And uh, that that's really what they are looking at, right? Is this guy is going to come to a B school? And one more thing, okay? B schools, a lot of them people don't realize is that all these clubs and committees that you see on the website, okay, don't expect to go there and say, okay, where is the consulting club? I would like to talk to people there. You have to actually run the clubs, right? So it's completely student run. So what happens then? A guy is going to come. He's going to say, well, I'm going to chill, you know, for the next two years. And uh, he's really going to burden everyone else in the class because he's not pulling his weight. Correct. So that's that's what you need to convince the atcoms that look when I come to the B school, I will make sure that I kind of uh, punch above my weighing uh, class and you don't need to worry about. Me. All right. Fourth thing. Right. And this is something that may not be in your control, but uh, I can still give you some ideas of how you can still, um, you know, uh, control some of this. Okay. So I'll tell you what B schools do. And sometimes when I tell this to students, they are very surprised because many of them have not heard of it. But uh, there is a quota system in all B schools. Okay. Which means that not all the 900 people. Uh, who got into Harvard, okay, had the ch same chance of getting in, okay. Some people had a better chance of getting in. Some people got in very easily. Some people might have fought and gotten in, uh, you know, in a, in a very tough category. Once you get in, nobody asks, right? Nobody is going to go to Columbia and say, hey, you know, I want to see, uh, you know, what was your admission number, right? Um, so, you know, what the B schools are looking at is in these two years, they want a good connection in the class, right? They want a good vibe. They want people to kind of bond and, you know, work together and learn from each other, correct? And what will happen is you're not going to learn from each other if all of you look the same. Just imagine you are a class of 900, uh, you know, people, all of them chartered accountants, all of them working for a big four accounting firm, right? you're not going to learn much right from each other. So what B schools want is they want to know how can you contribute in what capacity can you contribute right to the rest of the class? Because you will learn a lot more outside the classroom in the two years of your MBA, than you will actually learn inside the classroom. That's the truth. Correct. So how do you contribute to this diversity? What makes you different? Now, I'll tell you the part that cannot be controlled. I know it's a bummer, but this is the part that can't be controlled. First of all, you can't control which country that you, the country that you come from. You can't control uh, your gender, correct? You can't control the industry that you come from, right? So let's give an example. Let us say Amit uh, uh, Gupta is applying. Amit Gupta is uh, 27. Uh, he did his uh, engineering from Delhi College of Engineering. And uh, for the last uh, three and a half years, he has been working for an IT company in uh, Bangalore. So let's assume that he works for Adobe, right? Great, you know, perfect. GMAT 730, correct? Now, the thing is, you are going to be competing with everyone else who comes from IT, okay? who has similar experience and who has similar, uh, you know, uh, GMAT scores. Correct. So that is going to be your competition. So let's assume that there are no chartered accountants applying from India, right? There is just one chartered accountant. Okay. Working in, let's say uh, PWC, correct. Who ends up applying to a B school. You know what? He has a huge chance of getting in. Why? Because they say, yo, chartered accountant from India, let's take this guy, correct? But if there are 100 chartered accountants all applying to the same school, then that becomes a problem. You can't change this fact, okay? So I'm just telling you the bad news, then I'll tell you the good news. What's the good news then? Well, you can change, like, they are also looking at other kinds of diversity. <clears throat> so if it is not a demographic diversity, can you get a psychographic, uh, you know, uh, kind of uh, uh, diversity. What I mean to say is, 
you can't change the other parts but maybe there is something about you that uh, you think uh, could be very unique in fact uh, i'll just give you a couple of examples again over here correct uh, so one of uh, my students had come from a vernacular uh, you know school and uh, till about you know uh, 10th 11th standard he was actually studying um, his uh, native uh, place back in andhra pradesh and it so happened that in 11th he came to hyderabad to study he was put in an english medium school and he was preparing for the iit and he said you know the two years i was bullied i stayed away from home and you know that was a very very difficult time and you know i could have easily slipped into depression and you know but i took that as a challenge and i kind of overcame that i went to college he actually you know became the president of the college toastmasters club so you know that's like a you know incredible story right but that's the kind of story that you need to project right so if you want to talk about another kind of diversity i have had students who have come from uh, the lgbtq community right and uh, you know and they have said right you know this is who i am and uh, this is this makes me different you know growing up in india growing up you know in such an environment you know how they felt about it so you know they are looking at something that is different about you correct uh, so just focus on the difference part okay and that's 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 what i would like to say okay uh um, fifth thing they are looking at people who are self aware who have got a certain personality correct so what i mean by self awareness is in fact i'll tell you a uh, very similar to what you know we spoke about in leadership which is you know um so i'll be taking all the questions in the end okay and if you have please put it in the q and a box not in the chat window i'll be taking the questions towards the end so self awareness according to me is a precursor for any, anything i don't know you have met people but uh, i have met people who are so completely unaware of themselves you know they would have no filter in what they are talking right being them with them is like a bore correct Uh, and you just have to endure these kind of people and what these schools really want is they want people who have a certain personality right who are self aware see when i say personality i don't want you to think of you know that they are looking at someone who has the personality and charisma of you know james bond right that's not what they are looking at but they are saying can this this guy why do you think they ask you about things like strengths and weaknesses right because they're just looking at it if you are going to say that your strength is that you are a hard worker and your weakness is sometimes you work so hard that you kind of you know forget about uh, yourself okay terrible it tells me that you're not self aware correct so they are looking at certain nuanced kind of you know uh, awareness aspects in fact i'll be talking about strengths and weaknesses a little later i have a slide on that so ask yourself how do i convince the b school remember what is it that we are doing through this six point evaluation checklist we are trying to convince the outcome we are trying to sell something to them correct i want you to remember the objective so you need to sell to them that i am self aware i know who i am correct i know what i can contribute i know i am genuine i am authentic i am not a i am not a fake right how do they know that your essays and if not your essays they have a process called the interview right and you know i'll i'll again give an example of how sometimes you know uh, things can go wrong in an interview so um, i'll in fact give you one example of both so i'll give you an example of uh, something that went right okay so one of my students he uh, applied uh, he had an interview at isb uh, so if you know it's typically an alum uh, panel of three people and uh, he essentially ended up uh, you know kind of taking this interview uh, he had uh, worked with uh, spastic children right so when he walked into the interview he was preparing for why mba post mba career goals and so on but when he got into the mba uh, in the interview the question was like the one of the candidates said i saw that you work with spastic and then what is the story he said no i have a relative who is kind of you know has this problem and that's how i became empathetic towards this and i've been you know contributing and so this guy said oh how do you identify that a child is spastic when the child is uh, like you know 
very young and then he gave like a couple of things ki aisa karte hain aisa karte hain you know it was a very uh, this thing so he said yaar yeah, interview went off very well but i don't know what they were testing but think about it this could have been a stress interview had he uh, fibbed or had he not uh, you know really shown awareness correct see you may be very uh, you know passionate about a cause but if you don't know if you're going to say that uh, you know i am with uh, greta thunberg on global warming correct but if you are not able to understand what it is and if you are not able to talk about it for 10 minutes in the interview pretty much you're going to uh, blow your chances of uh, getting into that school right um okay so i'll just do one thing i'm just going to connect my laptop to a charger just one second all right so hopefully my voice gets stable now okay so um the last point okay is uh, goal clarity what these schools have realized is people who do well in life in general are people who have a clear vision of where they are going now whether they get there is a separate thing but at least they have clarity in where they are going which means in other words most b schools will ask you about your career goals realize that there is a reason why they are asking you what is your career goal they are not asking you what is the job that you will be doing correct because see it's okay you know your job could be whatever but as long as you have a general goal general direction and you know sometimes uh, uh, hardly uh, these schools ask about long term in fact even if you look at it isb has asked you only about i think till uh, 2030 right or 2025 correct 2030 so the idea is that these schools also understand that they are not going to have that but you know knowing what kind of employer will hire you right uh knowing what transferable skills uh, that you are able to bring to the table so i'll give you an example of a student who uh, you know he used to uh, uh he he actually worked uh, in flipkart uh, for about 5 years uh, he got into ross with a full scholarship his name is arshak and uh, arshak worked in uh, flipkart and you know when he applied to a b school uh he said i wanted to get into consulting and most consulting firms he had already done the research that most consulting firms like mckinsey bain bcg uh they are consulting today for companies that want to digitize okay this is a very big buzzword right everyone is looking at digitization and he said look i have had a ringside view okay of how to digitize really i mean because you know you have to change how a particular market thinks and for that you need to uh, come up with some very innovative uh, solutions and if you think about it flipkart was one of the leaders when it came to india specific solutions and he says i have been at the forefront of all of it so these are real transferable skills that i bring to the table correct and coupled with an mba correct from ross where i actually learn the principles the framework of problem solving correct i will be an ideal candidate for any top consulting firm in fact that is the same story that uh, garv sahani told so if you actually you can actually go to uh, linkedin and you can actually look up garv so garv sahani uh, currently works for mckinsey in the us is in seattle uh, again worked in infosys and in bangalore crack bubble student ended up doing his mba from ross uh, and ended up becoming a consultant all of them you know they have a very clear see most times what happens people will just go and write this i want to be a consultant without really thinking through without understanding right what are the transferable skills why are you best suited for that job again what are we doing we are trying to convince the appcom that you have what it takes to get to that goal right is your application actually focusing on convincing the appcom about that right so at this point i'm going to just pause i'm just going to see um, if uh, i have any questions i have one question which is for a particular scholarship program how can i present a story about my biggest achievement okay so what is your biggest achievement okay uh, how do you actually pick your stories so i'm going to be getting to that shortly in fact uh, that's my next segment uh, but i just wanted to just get a quick check uh, are we so far 
on track any questions any takeaways that you have had so far any uh, things that you want to share with us in terms of reflection anything that you um, heard for the first time that you weren't aware of okay uh, so coming to this what they are looking at is as i told you think of it this way okay think of it this way there is a large waiting room there is a huge hall everyone who has applied to the b school is basically entering through that hall now what the you know the adcom is doing is there are these smaller rooms okay so there is a central large foyer and there are these smaller rooms and uh, there is a person saying acha what's your background you say i am uh, you know in technology five years experience 720 gmat he says sir please go to room number 3 second person comes she says i am a female applicant i have a you know 680 on the gmat uh, you know i have uh, done you know my bachelor's from st stephens delhi in uh, economics and uh, i work as a media publicist uh, you know for a fashion brand they like you know what you need to go into another room correct because you seem to be different than you know others so why don't you get into that room so what they are really doing is they are filtering people into different rooms think of this way correct um and now that you are inside this uh, you know uh, room you need to now convince that look there are already 15 people around you okay all 15 people have very similar experience so i'll tell you uh, you know why i'm telling this example is because many a times what i've seen is people give the same example saying you know what there was a time when the project that i was in had a major crunch uh, my manager also ended up leaving uh, i had to step up and i stepped up the plate and i uh, delivered on time under budget i got a award from hr for it and this is my achievement you know everybody else okay with similar experience is going to do the same thing correct so what you need to showcase is how are you different and here is one good way to really think about it okay uh, and i want some volunteers if you don't mind um, if uh, someone can tell me um, just tell me your undergraduate college number of years of experience your current employer and your gmat score so your undergrad number of years of experience current company gmat score all right so okay so i i'm going to pick i'm going to pick uh, ashish okay uh, ashish or uh, anybody who's put all the okay so i'm going to pick uh, lakshmi narayan okay so lakshmi narayan you are going to compete okay so i'm just going to give it over here so ganesh this is just like a small uh, example here is how all of it see i am not getting into how you will differentiate further and it is not even about your profile correct for example i am going to now give another example uh, that we had from digvijay um so you know look at it bsc msc ma but 20 years indian navy correct now the moment you see indian navy 20 years very different profile correct so now what is going to happen is people are going to say how many defense people from india okay uh will end up you know kind of applying to uh you know at school so i'm just going to take uh, the last one let me just give an example of uh, this thing that i got uh, from piyush so piyush um you know here is the problem that people from iit uh, face okay the problem with uh, people from iit is you end up you know kind of uh, you end up competing with someone like this right so please i am not trying to demean what you are saying right i am not trying to say that a 720 is bad iit madras is bad or something i am just giving an example of the kind of people that you will end up competing with so now you have to ask yourself 
what is it that i am going to tell which is different from what that guy is going to say correct if you are going to say how awesome it was for you to get into iit then every guy who is applying with an iit background is going to say the same thing correct so you can't use that as your competitive advantage anymore right so and and as i said drawing a straw man figure correct so draw a straw man figure with maybe you know better so if you have a cgp of let's say 8 uh, try to assume that a guy with cgp of 9 has applied correct what it does is apart from being a very humbling experience right um you know it it, it also kind of tells you that you need to focus on certain things that will tell you that you are a uh perhaps a better fit for that school uh, so you could say hey you know i know all of this are the same but here is one thing that is different about me the one thing that is different about me is i have always questioned the status quo right from childhood right and you know you can then give an example that i was working in a a, a company right i was working in an it uh, company and i quit that job and i actually joined an ngo right much against my uh, parents will because i went to a decent uh, you know uh, college i went to ms ramaya engineering college uh, in uh, bangalore but you know i i did something like that i questioned the status quo and your school tells me that you guys also question status status quo right maybe you apply to has berkeley by the way this the example that i'm giving you is an actual example his name is akshay yadav okay again you you can check him up on uh, linkedin right was from it you know quit his job joined an ngo you know really so he didn't do it for an mba by the way right i know that guy is super passionate about it so you can tell a different story right um and he got into has berkeley right so akshay is a alumnus from has so that's the point that we need to look at what are the three ways in which you can find your esp so a it has to be in your education so something special about your qualification that you think can of stands out right uh, so that's that's you know probably the first thing that you can look at look at your experience is there anything unique in your experience that you can highlight that you can showcase correct and look at your extra curriculars they are looking at one spike they are not looking at a guy who is going to be 10 on 10 in all the three areas they are very clear they know they are not going to get that guy so they are saying i want one nine out of 10 even if the other two are like seven or eight i am okay get me one nine or one ten the question is now to you what do you think is your usp and the thing is and i am sorry again my intention is not here to make you feel bad or uh, you know make you feel less worthy uh, as i told you b school admission is a flawed process in itself i am just telling you how the system works and i am just telling you what are the ways in which you can beat the system correct in some sense but if you were to come and tell me that arun there is nothing special uh, you know uh, with my education nothing special with my experience nothing special with my extra curriculars to be honest you are you even william shakespeare cannot save your application right in the sense yeah to some extent you can but you need to have some stories uh, that has to uh, be you know kind of written in a nice way so yeah you need two things okay let me put it in a very simple way you need two things you need interesting stories and you need an interesting way to tell that story two things interesting stories and an interesting way to tell those stories what we can control is an interesting way to tell the stories but at least not very interesting but at least some interesting stories need to come from your side okay um so i have been giving examples of this so whenever you are picking stories how do i believe you why do i believe you correct so in order to believe you need to be telling me stories correct so that's what someone asked right right now so piyush so you tell me what are examples because my point is you need to tell what you have whatever story you are picking in order to showcase i'm just going to give you three filters you can apply these three filters to your story ask yourself is it a recent story 
ask yourself is it a relevant story recent thumb rule three four years yeah don't pick something from childhood okay but if something really big happened let's say in college like something really like you know uh, impactful then sure you can pick a story from college also right in fact the example that i gave you earlier was of someone who picked a story story from when he was in you know high school and college so it's okay if it is that but apart from that my suggestion pick something recent secondly because if you don't pick something recent they are going to ask well we asked him for a story and the only story he remembers is something that happened in his life 15 years ago that tells me that nothing interesting has happened in your life in the last 15 years correct so make sure that it's recent enough make sure it's relevant right a lot of times what happens is uh, people tell things that are nice to know but how is it relevant okay so i'm not uh, you know making this up but i had someone correct write an essay about what is unique he wrote about his family and uh, you know uh, he said that my uncle and my this they are settled in canada uh, i have like someone else who is settled in some other country and whenever they come uh, we are a very multicultural uh, family therefore i am unique right now the point is sure but what did you do right i mean what did you learn about that culture it is your relatives who came back you know during summer vacation and you know not really relevant to the story it's an interesting story okay he had put it in a very interesting way whatever i told you did not do justice to uh, the actual story <coughs> but he had like relatives uh, in uh, five or six countries and uh, whenever they would have these family weddings you know they would get all these relatives uh, from different uh, parts of the country and uh, about uh, you know the different culture and so on but it doesn't matter to a b school correct and lastly what was the impact you created always focus on what was the impact it's not what you did for example i have seen uh, you know when people talk about let's say extracurriculars right they ask you know so how do i talk about my extracurriculars for example uh, i'm going to give you two statements tell me which one makes more uh, impact statement number 1 i am very good at maths statement number 2 i am number 4 in india in sudoku well obviously it's statement number 2 because when you say you're good at math right it doesn't really mean anything correct but when you say you're number 4 in india in sudoku you are actually telling me the impact for example if you say that i was part of a ngo and we collected money i would like to know how much you collected or i would like to know uh, what systems did you build correct did you build a new website for them what did that you know increase the traffic or did it benefit them i am looking at uh, you know impacts okay and how do you actually pick i know a lot of you are like scratching your head thinking what is the best way <coughs> the best way is to start with a mind map so what i have over here is a very simple mind map we have a you know person called rohit so rohit i am going to take one step at a time let us look at uh, his academics uh, he has a gmat score it's kind of lowish it's about 700 he thinks it's low at 700 but uh, that's what it is uh, <coughs> he's a chartered accountant he's all india ranked top 100 cleared in this first attempt he is very proud of it so that's the second data point uh, he also wants to talk about one more thing which is when he was doing his bcom uh, he actually did his article ship for his uh, chartered accountancy therefore he doesn't have a lot of extra curriculars to show for in college in fact you know he hardly attended college <coughs> now this is your academics part now i want you to think are there any stories here is there anything that you would like to think of that you could talk about now there are multiple ways to do it right for example he could have spoken about how hard it was for him to actually you know get into the top 100 in his first attempt correct while he was you know doing this article ship and you know how you know he has never he has kind of never enjoyed you know that that kind of this 
He's already always been working 18 hours a day. So he's from Mumbai. So, you know, the travel and everything. So he wants to showcase that and, you know, say that, you know, uh, maybe that's something that tells me, tells something different about me. Look at extracurriculars. So he knows a little bit of German, right? He is at a B1 level, uh, which is kind of decent, right? He can speak in German and, uh, you know, that's an asset he has. Uh, does it merit an entire story? Perhaps not, but he's still toying through it. Uh, he is slightly proficient in playing the guitar. Uh, he has a startup idea, but he's not very sure. So all these question marks that you see are like he's not sure. Then there is a personal background, right? Uh, he's thinking, father was in the army. He taught me certain things. I used to shift houses every two years. That taught me, uh, you know, adaptability because every time I would go to a new place, I learned, you know, to fit in. I, he also had another story, which is his dad would always give him a trunk, which was of the same size. And he said that every time, you know, I moved, I would accumulate new things, new toys, but I had only so much space. So I had to prioritize and decide what I had to take along with me and what I had to leave behind. And he said, it's made a huge impact in, you know, uh, being an essentialist. So he actually has uh, a story around it, correct? He also toys about this. I had a breakup with my girlfriend. Uh, should I be putting that story because it was emotionally traumatic? I don't know whether B schools would want to listen to it, correct? Then he talks about his work experience. He's been working in Cabbage Gemini and Deloitte. Uh, so he can have had these two experiences he wants to talk about in one and the, the other thing. So we don't know what it is, but I hope you're getting a sense of what I wanted to uh, you know, tell you over here, which is, you know, try doing that, uh, try to, uh, you know, put small post-it notes, correct? So I'm a big fan of putting post-it notes and just, you know, putting one idea, let it, you know, be there on the wall, you know, look at it, think about it, uh, think about how you're going to tell the story uh, and, you know, uh, that, that that's a good place to start, correct? Um, now, any, any questions, Piyush, uh, please put it in the Q&A box. Now, uh, the last part of what I have to say, which is how to present yourself, right? How do you actually present yourself? So uh, the first is, you know, uh, there are a lot of frameworks, but uh, there is one uh, framework that I love for storytelling, and it's called the START framework. So what happens in the START framework is, Whenever you want to talk about a particular incident, you want to talk about something that happened to you, you start off by giving them the situation, correct? See, I'll, I'll give you an example. Let us say someone were to come and say, I was bought in as a CEO. I fired 100 people. Company started making profits. I was successful. You know, I really don't know, man. Like, I mean, sure, but I would like to know more, correct? Why were you brought in? So the earlier CEO had failed and, you know, the company was running into losses and I was brought in by the board with a clear mandate of turning the company profitable. What did I tell you? I gave you the situation. The task at hand was very clear. There were two areas in which I had to focus on. I had to focus on, you know, uh, option A and option B. Option A had, you know, 1,000 people being retrenched and option uh, B had 100 people being retrenched and there are, you know, trade-offs. Now you tell me what you did. Maybe you decided to go for option A or you went for option B, okay? What action did you take? Why did you take that action? Did you face any challenges? When you laid off people, did people protest? Did you take care of it in a humane way? Correct? Because at the end of the day, it's a matter of their livelihood. That is the action I want to know about. What were the results? Now that you did whatever you did, what was the result? Did the company become profitable? Correct? Were you recognized for it? And finally, and this is the most crucial part that I think a lot of times people miss out on, which is takeaways. What is your personal takeaway? What is it that you learned from this whole experience? Right? So that's what needs to come out very clearly in the story that you write. Okay. Um, so that's the start framework. Uh, 
One uh, point that I wanted to mention over here is again, while you're writing a story, you know, you can use a start framework. There is also this question on strengths and weaknesses. Uh, and I want you to pick something that is. Uh, uh, so the whole idea is that, you know, that's really my weakness and I can't do uh, anything much about it, right? So what I have to showcase is, look, this is my uh, weakness, but at the same time, I'm aware of my weakness, okay? Don't say I've fixed my weakness. I've seen another thing when people talk about themselves. They say, oh, by the way, I used to have this weakness that I would not plan very well, but I got a feedback from my boss. And once he gave that feedback, I started, you know, planning brilliantly. Now though I get, uh, you know, uh, routine, uh, uh, you know, things for, like uh, praises from him on how well I, uh, you know, uh, plan. Wait a second. This is a weakness question, correct? Don't tell me that it's your, it's your strength now. Correct. So tell me something that continues to be your weakness, right? That's something that you continue to struggle with. Okay. Uh, here is one more, right? A lot of people who are very driven in life, okay, they end up having almost like they can't accept mediocrity. You know, they always want like things to work in the way they have seen things and uh, they are unable to lower their expectation from others. And uh, if others are not as driven that, as they are, uh, you know, it becomes very hard because, you know, this guy's like, like, you know, go, 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 right, for everything. And then uh, everyone else around uh, is not able to match that energy, correct? Now, they just want to know you, correct? So they want to know you as a person, uh, you know, they want to say, well, is this person interesting, right? Uh, if you were to come out of this application in front of me, right, uh, would I like to meet this person? Would I like to have this person in on campus, correct? And, and you know, a person who is authentic and genuine, right, uh, you know, the way he writes or the way he approaches this question will not be from a perspective of gaming the outcome. You know what I'm saying? Like, he will not try to say, let me put the nice things that will help me get in. So as long as you're genuine, you don't need to worry. Um, one more thing that I want you to understand is, please use tools. Make sure that the essay that you're sending out, okay, is bulletproof. Make sure that it does not have grammatical errors. One way to do that is obviously let your friends or family proofread it. People who you think have good writing skills, they can proofread. Obviously, you can come to experts like Crack Verbal. So that's what Crack Verbal specializes in, right? In how to tell your story, how to message you, how to polish you in such a way that you present yourself in the best possible way in front of the ad comp. So if like, you know, if you're doing it by yourself, at least use a good tool like Grammarly, right? Strongly recommend uh, this tool. A lot of suggestions that it will give you may not make sense. So please do not accept all suggestions. See, you need to have some amount of knowledge to use Grammarly. Grammarly will not do the job for you, okay? So that's one warning that I want to give because um, it's like, think of it as a thesaurus, right? So you may end up replacing every word with like a, another word, but sometimes when you read it, it may not sound like you. It may not, you know, have that genuine voice, right? Very important to find your voice in the way you're writing. Uh, one more tool is uh, you have uh, wordcount.net, okay? So wordcounter.net is uh, counter, sorry. Uh, .net is another website that uh, will give you words and characters because a lot of times, uh, you know, uh, B schools will uh, give you the word limit. Sometimes it will even give you character limit, right? I know there are ways in Google Docs for you to do that. But uh, I think, in fact, my suggestion, please don't do it on MS Word. Go to, uh, you know, Google Docs. Uh, that way it's a lot easier for you to just share the link 
Uh, you also have a version history, so you don't need to worry about uh, maintaining it in uh, different places in your hard drive and uh, potentially losing them. I know you might already be doing this, but I just wanted to make sure that I tell you so. And finally, LinkedIn, right? So LinkedIn is another terrific place for you to go to in case uh, you're looking at people who have already been there, uh, people who have done that. Try to look at uh, connecting with people now that you have a couple of months before R2, look at the kind of schools that you want to apply to. Uh, many of them also have student ambassadors. So if you have spoken to any of them, uh, it's good for you to mention that in your application as well. Uh, you know, especially uh, it shows that you have done your research. Again, going back to what I'm saying, the school says, does this guy even have an idea why he's applying to my school, right? I mean, he's sitting in India, right? I mean, what does he know about Cornell, right? So you're going to say, look, I, I may not have come to the US, I'm not have come to your campus, but here is what I have done in preparation. I actually reached out to a alum and, you know, uh, he's kind of in a geography, he's kind of in a position that I want to be in, correct? Uh, and I've spoken to him about my career prospects and he encouraged me to apply to Cornell. And I also ended up, uh, you know, talking to a current second year student who happens to be my college senior. And, you know, we have similar profiles and I'm so, uh, this. what you're telling the B-school is, don't worry, okay? <laughs> there are other people who are like me. And if something happened to them, you have already helped them, uh, or rather you have already made the decision of letting them in. I am very similar to them. Correct? So you have a better chance of succeeding with me also. That's what you're going to try telling the B school. All right? All right. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to just directly kind of uh, jump to this part, which is uh, in case you have not done so already, any questions that you would like to know about your profile, please let me know. Uh, I'll be uh, we'll be glad to help you. We'll give you a custom report. But more important is uh, make sure that you talk to someone uh, in the team. It could be Monica, Swati, Likesh, uh, all of these very experienced. They have worked uh, with us for many years. In fact, Likesh and I uh, started our journey together in Crack Verbal in 2011. So in case you're talking to any one of them, they have a you know, lot of experience because they have also worked. So make sure that you talk to them, but we also give you access to our experts. So in case you have a GMAT score, uh, you know, uh, we will also be putting you in touch with our application experts uh, and we can probably have a more thorough uh, analysis. Without your GMAT scores, it will become very hard. Uh, so, but we can still guesstimate, but I think the best way is when you have a valid GMAT score. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking up uh, the questions that I have in the chat window. Okay, uh, Pratik, please contact someone in the team uh, and I will try to see if I can just let someone else know tomorrow uh, to contact you. But just check your email for any email from Crack Verbal. Just reply to that email. Okay, I'm just going to get to uh, the questions. We have one person who asked, how does a B school look for uh, a break in career? Great question. Uh, in case you have a break in your career, let's say you got laid off or you decided to quit your job, it's perfectly okay. First of all, please don't hide it. Don't try to create unnecessary drama over saying, oh, you know, this happened in that company. There was this politics and I couldn't take it. Hence, I quit. And then, you know, I decided not to work. I wanted to, you know, do something. Don't do all that. Yeah, just tell them that, look, I was working in this company, you know, whatever the company and people understand that people get laid off for no uh, mistake, correct? Um, the only thing is, if you're currently unemployed, then applying to a B school will become a problem, correct? Because the B school is thinking that, look, if this guy cannot find a job right now, okay, how will he find a job after he does an MBA, correct? So that's one problem that B schools will have. So please don't apply to a B school as an unemployed you can have other creative ways of messaging your story. So I'll give you one way in which you could. So um, people can talk about a startup, right? So you started something on your own. 
which means by the way don't just say start up okay you want to kill yourself you're going to say that because in the interview they're going to ask you questions heck do you even have a website correct if i google your startup and your name what are the websites that come up correct so they are going to do the research but i'm just saying try to be a little more creative there are some um, you know options that we usually work with when we work with students but that's about breaking your career what should a pers per person with an average profile do very honestly as i told you if you have an average profile then you will go to an average college i am not trying to demean anyone but i'm just saying if you have an average profile there is no way you can get into harvard correct so average is also a relative term other thing is you may think you are average but many a times when we work with students we figure out there are so many facets there are so many things in their profile that is different and that contributes to their overall uh, story so you could be actually very surprised uh, you know that these schools uh, may you know actually tend to not worry too much okay uh, i have one more question how can i justify my consistently bad grades very clear priya has made it clear consistently bad okay uh, don't worry i said told you gmat is one way correct second is accept it see i i actually had a candidate who wrote this he said first year i had jaundice second year i had malaria third year i had typhoid fourth year look they are not interested okay it looks like an excuse instead of that here is what i would do i would kind of put up my hand and say i own up i know my grades weren't good but guess what i was actually working part time you know i was i was doing like extra work you know and i was also involved in other things and at that point in life i didn't realize the you know seriousness of academics right because think about it you are trying to admit convince the admission committee and uh, you know they are looking at your academic potential but then my gmat course you know uh, are great or you know post that i took up so and so course or i have a patent to my name whatever makes them feel that you can take care of the academic load correct uh great to know your uh, profile prasenjit i am assuming there is no question over there uh, i have the last three questions from akash rajita and ravina so i'll be taking that and then we'll kind of conclude to this session we are just about uh, time akash had this question how about story with experience regarding taking family business to perfect okay akash taking your family business they are looking for a business case uh, i would say makes for a great story please go ahead use that okay family business friends business anything that shows you have a business orientation correct especially if you come from a very technical aspect try to showcase that you have something in you that is also the this thing rajita had this question that is this criterion the same for one year pgpx courses also the answer is yes okay but remember that the parameters itself may change for example uh, if you look at a top 10 usb school right um, someone asked this in the chat window also what is good today good has been redefined if you ask me good is i would say 730 plus 700 is also not making the cut correct 740 maybe you know or 750 maybe right if you are looking at a top 10 us school but if you are looking at an indian school let's say the pgpx or the isb the average gmat or rather even if you have a 670 680 with a very good profile is not a problem does it mean that isb and iams are less than those top 10 schools not necessarily correct see what happens is it's also in terms of the number of quota seats right like how many indians that each uh, school is going to take every year right Uh, is a number in the lower tens, which means that all the top ten uh, schools put together, also you're going to have a few hundred seats for Indians. But we have thousands of people applying for those few hundred seats, correct? Whereas if you look at a school like ISB, right, you have almost nine uh, hundred seats, right? That's almost four five times the number of seats in the US schools for Indians, right? So I think those are the kind of things that actually uh, change. But net net. the six parameters that i gave you uh, would pretty much be uh, what they were and the last question we have is from ravina one section of an application asked 
which of my qualities could negatively affect my success how to approach such questions you know uh, ravina which of my qualities could negatively affect my success if you think about it is nothing but a weakness question it is nothing but tell us about your weakness right and that's that's pretty much what you need to be answering correct so make sure that you are telling them as i said about something that you uh, you know do not have uh, currently uh, something that you are working on but you know is a weakness for example one thing that is going to hold me from success is i am going to expect the same uh, level of commitment from everyone in the team right if i am going to be uh, requiring that it could be detrimental to my success what is that that is nothing but my weakness right so great uh, and uh, someone asked for six parameters three this video will be sent to you uh, so you will be having uh, you know a way by which uh, you would be uh, watching the game so in the recording you should be able to go back and have a look at it. thanks so much for attending today i know uh, it's late in the evening we just tried out this time slot to see how it works i hope i was able to make uh, the last 90 minutes of your life worthwhile and uh, if so please uh, share the message about trackable in case your friends are applying uh, we are always happy to interact with uh, anyone who may need our service uh, in case you are looking at applying in r2 and you want to know how trackable can help you uh, to a conversation thank you and